Hello and welcome, my name's Steve Woody and this is Farming Simulator 22. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you are brand new to this game and that you haven't played this game or this, in fact, simulator, because it's not a game, it's a simulator, but I'm going to assume you have not played it before. I'm going to talk you through this as a completely new player. Now, there's a lot of great videos, great guys, great people out there, and they've all done amazing things. I've watched most of them, and something I've seen consistently is that even the people that are trying to help new players, sometimes I feel like they've forgotten what it's like to be a new player, and this can be a little bit unforgiving when you first start. And so it, I think, helps to go back to the very beginning as a new player with that in mind and talk you through everything you need to know. And that's what we're going to do in this video series. Now. What I'm going to do to, to kind of preface this before we get started is just say that there is no end goal here. There is no outcome. There is no end boss. There's nothing to complete. It is a simulator. Therefore, you build what you want to build. You do what you want to do. Now, with that being said, there are ways that you can, um, I don't want to say enhance, I don't want to say cheat, but there are ways that you can do things within this to make it more favorable to do some things more than others and that's fine that's totally up to you this has an incredible ability to be able to mod and change and whilst you could do that there's nothing wrong with doing that I kind of want to take it back a step so when you first load this game and you see this screen it says there's a career mode or career and I was like great okay I can play this as a kind of game it doesn't really feel like it's a career mode it's more just like that's what you're jumping into as opposed to multiplayer and esports fascinated me by the way we'll look at talk about that later but when you go into career mode i believe that giants the software that made this game really missed a trick and i think one of the community members is on the right track and i think it, with a little bit of fusion and hopefully with my help we can blend it all together and i can give you a great initial experience in this game now, all of my videos throughout this, I'm not going to waffle. I am at the moment, I appreciate, because I want you to understand the context of what we're doing and why we're doing it. But we're going to jump straight into the game. And then when we do further videos, we'll just jump in, we'll jump out. None of that messing about. I appreciate your time. I value your time. I'm not going to ask you to like, subscribe, or do any of that other stuff. No sponsors, nothing like that here. We're just going to jump into it. And so with that being said, let's do that right now. We're going to click first on career. Okay, when we do that, we're going to need to uh, create a new game. I'm going to assume you're here with no games at all. So we're going to choose an empty slot. Now, as we start to play this simulator, you're going to notice that in career mode, there are three options. There's a new farmer, farm manager, and start from scratch. And it says easy, medium, hard, but I kind of think it's like very easy, easy, and then realistic. So I, don't, I wouldn't really focus on this as easy, medium and hard because hard could turn you off and actually start from scratch is the best way to get the most realistic experience out of this and I think when you go in as a new farmer you're kind of robbed of the experience let's say that the reason for that is you already own some land and equipment the economy is profitable gameplay settings are uneasy it's kind of a bit cheesy really when you go in through this it's great for the tutorial and for getting started but you don't really you don't really progress you don't really feel it you don't you don't start anywhere you just you've got what you need and it's quite easy to continue from there farm manager makes it a little bit harder you don't have any land you don't have any um, vehicles or anything like that but you've got like one and a half million dollars or pounds in the bank so you can pretty much do what you want start from scratch you're in debt when you start you don't have a lot of money this kind of gives you a real feel and I would say an opportunity for you to grow and for you to build. So if that's what you're interested in, you want to do that. If you want to jump in a mod and, and just start playing about, great, you do you. I'm assuming throughout this series that you want a kind of a gameplay element and you want a progression system, which I think is somewhat missing. And a typical, nice, pleasant English chat to narrate over the top of that. By the way, I've separated the audio, so if you want to shut me up, you can just turn me off from the audio and listen to the game only. Um, I have separate tracks within all of these recordings that you can do that. So we're going to go ahead and ignore everything I've just said about this, and I'm going to go for New Farmer. I would recommend, though, if you're going on any other normal map, you would do start from scratch. The reason I'm going for New Farmer, and I'll explain that in a second, 
is for the next screen. So here are the maps that you have available to you within the game. And this is where I think Giants, the software behind the game, have made a mistake. Your first map that you're presented with is Elm Creek. This is a, a US based map. It's very flat, it's very open. It's where you'll do your initial starting guide. That's great. And it's a great map to play on. And it's the default map of the, of the simulator, and that's fine. If you want a little bit more variety, you can come across to Port uh, Belleron, which I believe is in France, and this is more of a European, um, a little bit harder, a little bit more in terms of uh, altitude, and some things to consider as you're going up and down hills and, and things like that, but and, and a bit smaller, not as open, so you've got to be a bit more considerate, but it's a different setting for you if you want this map instead. And then finally, you have Ellen Grant, which is... Uh, uh, very hilly, mountainous regions, very uh, closed and small, beautiful, picturesque, uh, but you've got these options for maps. Now, if you have the downloadable content for uh, Platinum, you will also have Silver Run Forest, which is another uh, map that is presented to you, but that's it. Now, the good news is if you wanted additional maps, you can download them, and that's from the downloadable content on the main screen that you would have seen. And so, here is an example. This is a user who has uh, uploaded and created Court Farm. Court Farm Country Park is a real-life map set in Somerset, UK. So there's so many different maps. Now, if you're using generated content from other community members, you have to be careful. You have to appreciate that they're not going to have all of that base simulation um, with them, they're going to be mod modded and they're going to have been altered in some way. That could be good, it could be bad. You're not going to know, so please do your research and please check. And I, I would recommend if you're going to download a mod, being security conscious and safe, only download mods from official reputable sources, i.e. throughout through, within the game itself, because they've been verified by giants. I would be hesitant to download mods from GitHub or any third party um, place you just you never know what you're installing and what's there and, and just be careful with it with that being said obviously modding is a massive part of the simulator and something you're going to want to consider but for now we're gonna get started with no mods except for one which is a map that we've downloaded and I'm gonna show you how you can download it and the map is called no man's land no man's land is what I believe is missing from this simulator there should be a way that at the very start, when you get started, you're starting with nothing or a very limited um, opportunity. And you have to grind and build your way up and learn things and you have to do that. And that's, that's what this map offers. And so it doesn't matter where you go, doesn't matter what map you use, doesn't matter if you build your own map, whether you use someone else's map, whether you use a core game map or a user map, it doesn't matter. Everything you do within that map is saved on your local machine. And so you can, simulate whatever you want but we're for the purpose of this video series going to assume as a brand new player you don't know what you're doing or how you're doing it and so all you'll do is come to the main screen here go to downloadable content and from here you are going to go to map in map you're going to look for no man's land now you can scroll through to find it or if you don't want to scroll and look at all of these maps that are available, just press the space bar and type in no man's and press search. And here it is. Now from here, you're going to want to install. Now I've already installed it, which is why it shows up, but you can, um, you can just click install and that's it. That is how you will use the mod. So now we have this additional mod. You can learn about it. You can read about it you can see what's happened. This is a, a mod by the author Alien Jim. I want to give a massive, massive shout out to Alien Jim because whilst I don't know them personally, I think they've been around for many, many years now. This map is about three years old. It comes from the old Farming Simulator 19. This, I believe this is what is missing from the core game. And I, I, I wish, I wish Giants would add this map as the first official map that you see with a bit of an introduction. This is where I think you should start, not where you currently do. If you go through the Getting Started Guide, they kind of set you up with everything and you're kind of given it all. This is what I think is the, the, the best place to start. So, with that being said, we've now got our installed mod for No Man's Land. We've done that and I've just shown you how to do that through downloadable content. We're going to go to Career 
and we're going to choose an empty slot. Now, normally I would go for start from scratch on any other map, but the reason we're going to do it different and I'm going to go for New Farmer is because Alien Jim has set this game up with specific settings and so you need to go into New Farmer to be able to get those settings. If you go into Farm Manager, you'll have one and a half million dollars. If you go start from scratch, you won't have what was intended for you. So you need to go into New Farmer to be able to get the, uh, the map as it was intended. So then we're going to go into New Farmer. We're going to go ahead and select our map, No Man's Land. And just before we do that, in the vast emptiness known as No Man's Land, there lies endless possibilities from the most basic of farmers to the most advanced technologies of dairy, wall, and even logging. Do you ever what it takes to survive the wilderness, or will you give up and move back to the city? Kind of feels like it's uh, giving us something to look forward to, and you can see here, um, this is kind of what we're faced with. So, to set some kind of precedence to this, we're going to roleplay and assume uh, for this that we have inherited a farm and as a result of this inheritance of this farm that we have been uh, had bestowed upon us we're going to pack up our life in the city and we're going to sell everything we own and we're going to come here and we're going to start a new life so we're going to press continue if you have any other mods uh, we're just going to deselect them all at this point there's some other mods i'm not going to talk about them at the moment yours should be empty if you're a new player we are only going to have no man's land because we need that because it's the map and we're going to go ahead and press start with no other mods enabled at all. The game's going to load. You'll see the loading screen in the bottom right hand corner. Make sure you keep an eye on the bottom left hand corner. I can't tell you how many times I've stared at this screen and not pressed start which you can now see in the bottom left hand corner. So just to give you before we jump into this uh, just a quick overview. This is going to be a game mode where I'm going to be talking you through all the things that I'm doing. It's going to be gameplay, so you're going to see me. There's going to be no editing on this at all because I want to give you everything in its raw form. We're going to set the game so that one day within the game from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. is about two hours in real life. So we're going to be recording these sessions as two hour sessions. They're going to be quite long, but you're going to see everything. And if you want to fast forward or skip anything you can do that I'll be able to later on pull out content to do specific um, guides that will be dedicated to areas but this will be the overall gameplay that you'll see this will be the complete playthrough now with that being said when I jump into this we're gonna get started okay I'm gonna talk you through I'm gonna narrate everything but we're on the clock so I'm not gonna be doing any cheats anything cheesy anything that could kind of take this away from being a realistic farming game simulator experience so we're going to go ahead now we're going to click start and we go into our character customization screen now i'm not going to talk you through this it kind of speaks for itself i'm just going to change my name to steve and we're going to get started so select your character once you're done hit confirm and this is us so as you can see right now i'm going to pause the game we are outside a building here this is like the main dealership and if I unpause, you're going to see here it's August. If you look in the top right, it's sunny. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. And I've got £100,000 in the bank. So that's what we're starting with. Now, if I press Escape, I'm going to open up the menu. This menu will show me in my first icon the map. And if I scroll out, you can see here these are grids that are numbered number 1 to 60. And we are currently in grid 56 which is where everything is. We can see these icons here. This is everything that is available, and I'll show you it in a moment. There is a farm shop here. Uh, in fact, there's two. There is a vehicle shop. There is a gas station. There is an animal dealership, and that is it. This is the main building. There is a road. It is one road in. That is it. And when we come in here, there are no other players. There are no contracts. There are no AI. It is just empty land and we own one plot of that land, which is what we've inherited here, and that is plot 26. And we're going to go and check that out in a moment. Before we do that, I just want to go through the game settings. So on the left-hand side, we're going to scroll down, and we're going to click on this tractor with a cog. Not the main cog, that's the main settings. Uh, I will show you my main settings, um, but they're just very, very standard. I haven't changed anything on here. We're going to look at the game settings. So game settings here, you're going to want to give it a, a, a save name. So I'm just going to rename this as No Man's Land. 
Okay, so we have that. Auto save after 15 minutes. Yep, that's fantastic. Uh, and we're gonna do time scale, but time scale I'm gonna do as 6x. Now you might wanna do it as real time if you want to. That way one minute in the real life is one minute in the game. I'm gonna speed the game up so it goes 6x. This means that two hours in the real time or in the real world is going to be approximately 12 hours in the game. Economic difficulty, it's set to easy. We're gonna change it to normal. I think this is good because easy is too easy. Hard, gonna be quite hard. Normal's fine. Traffic, you can leave it on. There is no traffic, but you can leave it on anyway. Seasonal growth, this is new to FS22. We're going to have this enabled and we're gonna say that days per month is set to one day. What this means is that when the clock within the game ticks over to the next day, so midnight, it will change months. Obviously 12 months, so if you're playing the game for two hours, and that two hours kind of gets you to the evening and you go to sleep, when you wake up it's gonna be the next month in the game. So one day is one month. You can change this, you can do whatever you want. You can change it up to 28 days, so it's a full month almost. Um, and you can change the time, but we're gonna set it to one day. Fixed visual month, we're gonna have off. Snow is on. Crop destruction is on. Periodic plowing required. That's actually set to off as standard, so we're gonna leave that off. Um, but we could turn it on, but we're gonna leave it off for now. Field stone, we're gonna leave on. Lime on, weeds on. And we'll talk about all this later. But for now, some people say if you're a new player, turn all of this off. I kind of think it is good to have it on. I don't mind it being on. Because um, I think it's more of a, a simulation and a, a realistic experience. Um, dirt is going to be normal. Automatic engine start, we're actually going to turn that off. I recommend you turn that off, but it does mean that if you get out of a vehicle and you don't turn your engine off, you're going to waste some gas. So just bear that in mind. Um, we're going to have trailer fall limit off. We're going to have fuel usage as normal. Fuel usage as normal. Stop and go braking is on. And the AI workers, everything is going to be off. Everything is going to be off. This means that whilst we can hire the AI to work for us, we still need to keep on top of everything. And I think this is important. So we're gonna have this, uh, so it makes us manage it a bit better. All right, so that's our game settings. We're gonna go ahead and save the game. And let's jump into this, because I appreciate we've already been recording for 20 minutes, and we haven't even started yet. So it's gonna be a longer, longer video today. All right, so now we're gonna jump into the game. Let's kind of show you around. We're gonna unpause, and we're gonna get started. So you can see in the bottom left hand corner we've got our minimap. If I press the number 9 key, I can choose to toggle this between off, circle, square, big square, or again off. I'm going to keep it there. You can also see in the top left is controls. Now with the controls, if I press F1, I can close that down and remove it or keep it open. For the first few videos, I will keep it open just so that you can see it and you can get used to it. If I walk up to this dealership, I get a new control, which you can see in the top left, it says open doors. I can press that to open the doors here, and we can go inside. And once inside, I can walk up to this desk. Okay, this now opens up a shop menu. And then over this side, if I come over here, is a mechanic where I can open up the vehicle options. So if I drive a vehicle into this area here, I will then have options to be able to edit that vehicle, but it must be within this area. So these are your main shop buildings, mechanic. If I come back out over this way here, you'll see here is a, um, a silo and the ability for me to, um, to buy and to obtain things from here. I'll have to drive a, a truck underneath this to be able to collect it, mind. Here is another building. This is a shop that allows me to sell. Now it does say sell wood, in the top left hand corner, but it's not just wood, it can be anything, it's just this says wood, um, but that it's just sell. So ignore the word wood, that's just where the map developer or the, the creator of this map has left that word in there, but it means sell. And in order to sell, you'd need to drive into this area here, you can see these hazards. Again, anything within the hazards is an area, so you can either drop it in here and it will either automatically take it, or you can dump it into here to sell, or you can drive onto here and if it doesn't automatically sell, you can walk over to here and click sell and it will sell whatever is on there. This is a sell point and it is a catch all, which means you can sell anything at all on here. And so we'll talk about that a little bit later, but for now, let's just keep running around here. 
and you're going to see there are two more points of interest. There's the animal barn there, and that just has an icon in front of it, which if we run up to this, now we can open up the animal dialogue. We have nothing here yet, so if we open it, it says we do not have any animals, so we can leave that. And the last one, and again, we can see by the hazards, that area. The final one here, this hazard here is your petrol station. This is where if you drive here, you'll be able to fill up. So you'll have to put whatever vehicle is in this square and you can fill up. That's it. That is all that we have available to us at the start here on this map. And then we just get to jump into our car. So let's do that now. We're going to jump into the car. If you look out, you can't go anywhere. You can't kind of run over here, but you can see a, a windmill. Looks like the, the world. This is just generic. You can't interact with it at all, but it just kind of shows you the the world going by. And so this is us. We're here. This is our inheritance. We've inherited a small area here in the middle of nowhere. It's been abandoned. So we're going to press E to enter our vehicle. And we're now in our truck. And you can see all of the controls in the top left hand corner. We're going to press enter to start our engine. I can use the middle mouse wheel to scroll in and to scroll out and to move around. And we're going to start driving. And this is going to allow us to drive. As I said, I can use the mouse wheel to scroll in and scroll out. And we're going to drive. If I want to press C, I can change the view. I'm going to keep this kind of view for most of the game, but hopefully the camera won't be too bad, but you'll get an idea. And uh, yeah, as we look around, I'm just going to, for the purpose of this, I'm going to just remove that. And yeah, you can kind of get an idea of this land as we drive down this path on this inherited farm that we haven't seen yet again a little bit of role playing is always good there is no game mode as such so you have to create your own story here but we're going to follow this around and in doing so you're going to stumble across your farm now what you wasn't told as part of this inheritance package when the solicitor signed it over to you is that it's in disrepair basically everything here is a mess you have this storage area here, which is a nice little undercover storage area. And as we go up the path here, you're also going to see... I'll just uh, turn the engine off here, leave the car and look around. You've got this field, but the field is... Yeah, it's knackered. The field's kind of... Seen better days. Now, as we continue and I give you this tour, I'm just going to press escape just for a second, go into the game settings, and I'm going to turn the time scale to real time just while I give you this introduction. That way, we're not losing too much time in the game. I will move this back as soon as we finish this introduction and I've shown you around, only because we've lost half an hour of talking already within the game and, I, and, and also in real life, but I want to make sure that I get to show you around. All right, so that's our... Uh, our field that we've just looked at there and if we walk over to it in the bottom right hand corner you can see the field info so it's owned by me there was potatoes here but they've withered it's not fertilized and it needs lime lime would help to increase the yield there's many things you can do to increase the yield of your crops um, but this is something in farming simulator there's there's kind of three main gameplay elements to this there's the agricultural uh, farming side of things many many different routes you can go down there there is also the animal husbandry uh, that we'll talk about where you can uh, raise animals and, and look after those and there's also forestry uh, and that's something else we'll look into as well so they're the three main kind of game types we're going to tie them all in together as we progress through this so just uh, taking the car moving forward here there's a little shed here. We're actually going to park the car outside this shed. And again, you can see these, this hazard line here. And the hazard line is something to just bear in mind. Because you need to park in front of this. Imagine it's a square. And the reason you need to do this is because if we come over to this and open the door by pressing the um, left mouse button, as you can see on the controls there, we can open this up. This is our tool shed. This tool shed has an icon. This icon is the exact same icon that we saw up the top in the main shop that we saw. This allows you to work on your vehicle. It's a workshop icon. So if I press R, which I can see in the top left there, I can now work on my vehicle. I can customize it and I can repair it. So I can do these things from this screen and it saves me 
meaning I do not need to go back up to the top to be able to do this. It's a nice little feature for you to have here. Okay, we're going to shut the tool shed down, and we're going to have a look around. So, over here, by this beautiful little lake here, we have a water tower. This water tower will allow you to put water into a container, but in order to use it, you'll have to walk to this and open the water valve by left clicking. Now this is done, you can fill this up with water. If you move away from this area, it will turn off. So at the moment it's okay, but if I move away from the area and then I come back, or after some time, I would then need to do it again. This is free water. It's filled up from this lake, I assume. It never ends. Don't worry, the lake won't go down. Um, Greta Thunberg's not going to come and shout at you if you decide to water the plants forever. It's okay. You're fine. It's a free water source. Um, and it's the only free water source in the game. If you build additional water towers later, you have to, you'll be charged for the water. So just bear that in mind. This is the only free water source. So there's your lake. Let's carry on moving around. You'll see we've got these silos. Silos is somewhere where we can store uh, crops or grain and things like that. We would dump it here. This is the dump icon. So we would dump it into this area here and it would then show up. And at the moment in the bottom right, it says this silo is empty. If we wanted to collect, we would position our truck underneath this. We would then be able to choose if we had something in here and get it back. And so that is a storage solution, a bit of a knackered one. I think the developer of this, or the moderator of this, the mod has done a great job. Really, really incredible job of building this and making it look really run down. And uh, yeah, um, an amazing map. I kind of feel like, as I said, where you should be starting. So then we're going to come over to our inherited land. And this you'll see from the picture when you load it into the game, you'll recognize this. We have some equipment that's been left to us, um, thankfully. We also have a building and a little outhouse. So we'll come back to the equipment in just a moment. Let's just start here and uh, we'll start with the outhouse. If you open this up. Yes. Complete with sound effects and visual cues. This is your outhouse building. Make of that what you will. This is your new home. Enjoy this if we open up the door. It is fully interactable, meaning we can go in. Not all mods that you download can you interact with, but this one you can. Again, the developer attention to detail was important to him, and I, I really respect that. We have a TV here. Oh, we have a, a knackered old sofa. Nothing really that you can do. Close the door. Um, and over here we have a kitchen area. Pretty knackered. We have a, uh, a games cartridge. We don't have any games cartridges at the moment, but there's a computer here. Uh, there's a knackered old bath in the corner. We have two icons here. One is by the bed. This means that if we go up to this, we can sleep. If we press R, we can choose how long we want to sleep for, if we want to skip time. So I'm not going to do that right now, but at the evening, you'll come here and sleep, skip the time till the morning, and that will allow you to then go to the next day. And remember, when you skip a day, it skips a month. This is your wardrobe. If you walk up to this and you press R, it will open up the character customization screen again. And that's it. We can also go up into the loft and, uh, yeah, you can kind of look around. There's some stuff over here. Not really much you can do at this stage, but, yeah, just some boxes and things like that. So, we're going to come back downstairs. We're going to go outside and let's look at the vehicles that we've, that we've acquired. So, you can see we have this tractor. This is a Steyr 8150 Turbo. This is one of the base tractors in the game, and if we walk up to it, it'll give us the information in the bottom right-hand corner. It is a 64 litre diesel, we own it, and it has 62% damage, meaning that it needs repair. We'll talk about that in a moment. Also, you can see it is filthy, it's been left in a right state. Uh, we have a weight here, this is a weight for the tractor, also damaged. We have a, a cultivator here, also damaged as we can see, pretty basic. We have a plow, this is a plow, we used to plow your fields and we'll talk all about this later. You have a, uh, a nice little trailer here. Again, still damaged. This is 80% damaged. And we have a combine harvester. Again, 80% damaged. This is a 58 litre um, Rostal Mash Nova 330. Again, seen better days. We also have a head. This is the head for the harvester. We have a seeder. This plants seeds into the ground. 
And and that's it. We have a hundred thousand pounds, which as I said, we've cashed in our life savings from the city. We've moved out here with our inheritance. We've got this land, but now we need to do something with it. And that's it. So the question is, well, where do you start? What do you do? You know, it's taken me 30 minutes to bring you to this stage of the game. And now, well, now we have to get started, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to start an entire playthrough series. And each video from here on in is going to be a day in the game. So I'm going to end this video here because you're going to be at the point now where you've got started. And if you want to continue, just watch the next video in this series. And we will go ahead and we will get started and I'll talk you through everything you need to know. But just before we go, if I press escape, there are menu items here. And I just want to very quickly run you through these because I think it's, I think it's important for you to understand what all of these mean. So starting on the top left, as we can see here, if we go all the way to the top, we have our map. This is our map of where we are. And we talked about this before. We are in plot 26. Uh, you can see the lake here, you can see our field, uh, and you can see uh, a lot of other information. Now this map has filters on the right hand side, and we will use these filters quite a lot. You can turn everything on or off, but this will show you what items are where. And this kind of gives you an overview of your farming empire, if you like. So at the moment we have no crop types, this is crop type 1, this is just continued. So if we turn this on, we'll be able to see all of the, the items. The next filter is growth. So if we zoom into this land here and we have a look, we can turn all of this on or off. So we can see any stubble tillage, if it's been cultivated, if it's been plowed, if there's a seed bed, if anything is growing, if it is ready to harvest, uh, if it's been harvested, if there's any foliage to be removed, or if it's withered. And this, this field is withered. So the next one is soil composition. Are there any weeds? You're going to have light weeds to heavy weeds, um, and you can see the color scale here. Right here you can see there's heavy weeds throughout this land. Is it fertilized? No. Does it need lime? Yes. And so you're going to be able to use these to turn them on or off, and you're going to be able to see the state of all of your lands. So for example, if you don't know if you fertilize an area or not, you can turn this on, and if it's blue, then you fertilized it. And there's two stages, one and two, you'll be able to see that. Also, there's hotspots. We can turn this on or off, and this is going to show us all of the things in the game. So animals, workers that are happening, contracts. Now, we don't have contracts in here. Other, this is our buildings. We can see our farmhouse and our vehicle workshop. Uh, any loading stations, where well, we can see one here. It's a water tank. Any productions, any tools. So we can see all of our tools that are here. These are what they are. Trailers, tip stations, loading stations, combines, and vehicles. So you can see everything here, hotspots. And that's it, that's the filters and that's the map. So we're not gonna do anything else here except if you press X, it says farmland. You can see it at the bottom of the screen. If I press X, this is gonna change us to a new part of the map where we can click on any of these squares now and it will allow us to purchase that land. It's 85,000 pounds per square, regardless of where the square is. So for every additional land uh, spot that you want to purchase, you need to pay £85,000. Now, we don't have that sort of money right now, so we're just going to stick to our land. If we wanted to sell that land, we could, um, but just bear in mind, if you sell that land, you then can't use it. You can't do anything on this land except drive through it. You're not going to have the ability to mow the grass or cut down the trees. You can't interact if it's not your land. You need to own it first. The only exception to that are the generic buy points, all of these here, which we can use. So anything like that was a point of interest you can use. So now you know how to buy land. The next screen down here is our active workers. This is the AI. Now there's no AI in this, so we're not using any at the moment. Um, there will be AI. We can hire people to work for us later, and we'll talk about that. But right now, we don't have anyone. The crop calendar is for seasons that we enabled. If you turn seasons off in your game settings, it will turn off the crop calendar. But I think you should leave this on. This is part of the game. And so... This tells you when you can plant, which is in green, and when you can harvest. So right now, in August, we could plant canola. We can see that because canola is here. We can plant it in August. We have two month, a two-month window to plant it. So today in the game and tomorrow, and then we can't do anything until July, 
which is when we can harvest. So we can see here trees, it's known as poplar. Um, we can plant those. We can harvest them all year round, but we can only plant them up to August. Grass, again, we can harvest all year round, but it will only grow and we can only plant it up until November. And oilseed radish. So as you can see, getting an idea here of what you're going to plant and when is, is quite important. And we'll talk about that. There's four seasons here. We can see spring, summer, fall, and winter. And that's the, the seasons within the game. The next thing is the weather. Uh, you're going to be able to see throughout the day here what day we're currently in. And then we'll see what happens next month. So right now it's sunny today. And we can see it's going to be sunny throughout the day, which is great. But next month we can see it's going to be different. It's going to be raining. And so just understand that certain things like if you have a grass bale outside in the rain it's going to ruin uh, and so if you try and cut the grass or you try and harvest your seeds in the rain you're going to get less yield uh, it's not ideal to do that so there are gameplay elements that you need to take into consideration regarding the weather next screen is the prices it's all based on liters and it's per thousand liters so always going to refer to this as the um, the prices per 1000 liters so we know, looking at the seasons, that we could actually plant canola right now. If we look at canola, we can see that the farm shop, which is the shop at the top of the map where we started, they will buy this from us for £971. Great. Well, if we look at wheat, they'll buy that off us for £470. And if we look at the calendar, we can actually plant... This is the only thing at the moment, but next month we could actually plant... Uh, both wheat and barley. Well, if we look at the price here of wheat, 470, barley, 453, canola, 971. Hmm. Well, what do you want to plant? I think we're going to go ahead and plant canola because we're going to get more for that when we come to harvest. And so, if they are buying from us, they are paying this price. If we are buying from them, we are paying that price. So we can sell it to them for 971 but we can buy it from them for 1500 obviously there's a markup this is the same station it's the same thing it's just where you buy it and where you sell from so one's for buying and one's for selling and so that's it this gives you all of your goods and you can scroll through and see everything available on this map you can download additional mods to get additional goods different maps have different goods for example on this map there are flowers and mushrooms um, flowers and mushrooms aren't available all the time and so just that to bear in mind. And there's other things that, again, you can either custom create your own mods in the future if you want to add new elements to the game. Or you can download things that other people have created. But for now, we're going to stick to the basic core version. And this is what we can have. So you can see here lots and lots of different things that we can talk about, we can get into later. Um, but for now, this is where you'll see your prices. Now, if you want to click on a specific item and press the space bar, you will see the seasonal fluctuations. How much is it worth in March compared to how much is it worth in February? And we can see that December right now for canola is the best time to sell it, whereas the worst time would be in July. And it's quite a big price difference between. Well, if we go back to the crop calendar and look at canola, we can see we can harvest it in July. Well, that means that if we were to harvest this in July, we'd get the least amount of profit from this. So maybe what we would do is harvest it, store it in a silo, and then hold it until December, sell it in December for more profit. These are some of the things that you need to consider when you're thinking about how you can be more efficient with your time within the game. Again, there's no outcome here apart from just to enjoy yourself, but it tries to make it as realistic as possible. So now you understand the market screen with prices. And again, it's all based on 1,000 liters. So... Just consider that when you're looking at something and working it out. If you know that you've got a bale of straw, or let's just say you've got a bale of grass, and that grass is worth 5,000 litres, uh, then you would come down to grass, and you would see that you will get £89. Well, you've got 5,000 litre bale. That means you'll get 5 times 89 if you sold it in February. So just that's how you would work out your pricing. Next screen is your vehicle overview. This shows you everything you own, not just vehicles, but also your... Um, attachments as well so we can see all of the attachments as well as the vehicles how long we've had them for how many hours they've been driven this affects your maintenance 
So the more hours you have within an item, the quicker it will damage and the less reliable it will become. This is the mechanic screen that shows you the damage of each item. Uh, you can see here that this one is 80% damaged, there's only 20% remaining. And so you can see it's actually in a really bad state. So you need to consider when you're looking at things like this, this is the harvester. Uh, yeah, you can, you can see. Anything that is least, this is the least key. And then what something is worth. So if we were to sell this, we get £21 for it. So as you can see, we don't really have a lot of good equipment at the moment, which is why I like this. It's realistic. It gives you this element of starting from scratch. And um, so this is the vehicle overview. Next is your finances. So this shows you over the last kind of almost two quarters of how you've been doing. And you can't go back past this, unfortunately. It's only going to show you five months, which is your current month, as well as your previous months. But it tells you what you've spent, what you've got, and your total balance as a result. You can take a loan here. Um, you can take that if you want to. You'll pay interest on your loan. For the purpose of this game and this playthrough, we are not going to take a loan. You could. There's nothing wrong with that. It's up to you. We're just going to assume that nobody wants to loan us money in this state. So we're not going to take a loan in this. Animals, we don't have any pen jets, so there's nothing in here. Contracts, we won't have any contracts because we don't have any um, additional computer players on this map. If you if you loaded another map, like um, the starter map, you'll have contracts where you'll be able to do jobs for other players. We don't have any players, so we don't have contracts. Production chains, we don't have any yet, but they would show up here. Statistics, this shows us everything within our game. So you can keep an eye on this. And then we have game settings, settings, keybinds. And what I highly recommend, if you've got some time now, is the help section. To so go through this, anything you need to know, you can learn here. And this is a great place to start. Knowing what type of farmer do you want to be, agricultural, animal husbandry, or forestry. How do you get started? Shops and workshops, starting equipment, contracts, which obviously we know aren't there. Build mode, which we'll talk about later. So there's an, a lot of elements in this game which you'll want to do yourself as a starting point. But as you progress, and as, you, as we progress, you'll learn, there's a way that you can use an editor in build mode to kind of make some of those things a bit easier. So, for example, you could buy some equipment to remove a bush. You would then take that tractor, drive it to that bush, and you would remove that bush. And you would do that whole process manually. Or... You can come into build mode and you can just delete that bush. <laughs> there's there's options to do that. But again, as a simulator, that's fine and we'll get to that point. But to start with, we, I want you to enjoy the, the process of getting to that point. So we won't be using build mode at the start. That's something we'll enable later. Seasonal farming, as I've talked about, that's there. AI workers, as I've talked about, that's there. Icons, icon overview, very important. This is all of your crops and what they are. This also shows you any greenery here, any animals, any products which you can see, any yield boost, anything else, and some shop icons. Now, some of these icons might not be here. Like, for example, we can see flowers are not here, and that is because it is specific to this map, and you won't see it because this is more of the general overview. Farming basics, or arable farming, maps and filters, which we've talked about, cultivating, plowing, sowing and planting and harvesting your different crops so grain catch grass we've got root crops corn and sunflowers there's cotton farming sugar canes grapes and olives chaff and silage and trees we'll talk about all of this in detail later how you can improve your yield through liming the ground fertilizing removing weeds picking up stones rolling the ground and mulching again we'll talk about all of that and we'll do that throughout the game Animals, we'll talk about general animals, how you can get started. We'll talk about cows, pigs, horses, chicken, sheep, bees, the dog, which we will acquire, how to care for them, and then the TMR, or total mixed rations. Forestry, there's types of trees, how to plant the trees, how to cut the trees down, either using chainsaws or harvesting machinery, logs and wood chips, how to remove stumps, and then we'll go into the basic economy, which is going to be your production chains. It's going to be how to make money, how to spend money. And then anything else that you find valuable is all here. And you can learn all about it. So I highly 
recommend going through this. And if you have any more um, help that you need, you can go and check out the Farming Simulator Academy. I've looked at it, I've been through it, and that's why I'm here creating this video series because I believe it's going to be a lot more beneficial in me guiding you through than you going and doing all that yourself. So you can learn that if you want, but this entire series, if you continue watching these videos, is going to talk you through all of these points as a brand new player getting started. But with that being said, I think we've talked enough. I want to jump into the game right now, so let's start playing. I'm going to end this video, we're going to start the next video, and we're going to jump into the game. Thank you very much for watching, I'll speak to you soon.